Okay, class. Um, first of all, I wanted to start off. Um, we're going to do Worldly Wise uh, Lesson 13. Um, but I wanted to start off by showing you, I just actually discovered this, um, that if you, we've been working with the word lists up here when I go through the definitions and sentences and stuff like that. But actually down here, there's games. And I actually just discovered this. So um, if you actually look under whichever lesson, there's an individual crossword puzzle for each individual lesson. And then at the end, there's one for all four, kind of like what we have in our book. And I was just playing a game of Battleship um, versus a computer where you actually have to configure where your ships are. And when you hit their ship, you have to actually answer a vocab question correctly. So I thought that was kind of cool as a review. So look at that um, if you are interested just as a review. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cover lesson 13 today. So let me click on that. Altruism. Okay, so altruism. Um, turning off the sound for how they... Um, how they pronounce the words and there goes my brain for a moment okay so the first word we're going to talk about is altruism um it is a noun it does have a verb form called altruistic um the definition the putting of others well-being ahead of one's own or someone who's being unselfish um so in general if someone does donations if someone does volunteering um, that's the idea of altruism. It's putting someone else's needs above their own, working at a soup kitchen, um, helping do gift wrapping for the holidays for someone. Um, it's that idea, though, of giving of yourself to someone else. Um, concurrence um, is an adjective taking place at the same time or simultaneous. Um, so this is like doing two things at the same time. Um, so like if you're watching TV and you are um, playing on your phone, that's something you're doing simultaneously. Um, or if you're playing video games and you're talking on your phone, um, that is simultaneous. If you are taking notes while you're listening to this, you're doing something simultaneously. Context is um, a noun form. It has two definitions. So the circumstances in which something exists or occurs and the surroundings of a word or phrase in a spoken or written passage. We're used to definition number two because when I say the idea of context clues, so looking at the words and the meaning around what's going on so that you can figure out um, what the word actually means. And you'll actually get questions like this on the AP test itself. Um, the first one, back to the first one, the circumstances in which something exists or occur, occurs. So it's the, the reasoning, the idea around it. It's, so it's that circumstances that have to do with it. Okay. The next one we have is crass. It's an adjective lacking delicacy or sensitivity or something that is gross. So I think of this as, uh, this actually is a good one. Molly's crass suggestion that I babysit for her on Saturday night since I never seem to have a date hurt me. So it's that, that idea that it's, it's lacking sensitivity, the idea that the sister never has um, plans to do on Saturday, so why don't you babysit for me? But it's that something that's, you're not sensitive to someone, it's usually something that's abrupt, that's rude, um, but it's lacking that, that delicacy and that sensitivity. Cuisine. It's a noun, it's a style of cooking. So we have Italian cuisine, Mexican cuisine, Indian cuisine, as in the sample here, but it's a style of cooking. American cuisine works too. So just having that. Debase is a verb um, to lower the quality, character, or status of, or to devalue something. So D as the, um, here again, I'm going to have a brain fart. Um, D as the root, uh, not the root, um, but gosh, this video is really bad today. Um, but D here, um, it, the meaning of this is to lower or to lessen. So here, if we're talking about the quality, the character, and the status of something, you're taking it down. Um, so you're devaluing it. You're taking it from one level and you're lowering it to another level. Okay. Um, and join uh is the it's a verb and it's number one to direct or command um or number two to forbid or prohibit so these do look 
rather different, but the idea of that if you're directing or commanding something, you can direct or command someone to forbid or prohibit them from doing something. So like your parents saying, um, you cannot do this or you cannot stay out past this time. They're forbidding you. They're enjoining you. Um, if someone's saying that either that you have to go do this, they're directing or commanding you. So they're enjoining you. Extemporaneous is an adjective. Com um, composed or performed on the spur of the moment with little or no planning. So this is someone who gets up and decides to give a speech, has nothing written down, nothing plans, nothing prepared, and they just all of a sudden decided to do this. Um, and it doesn't have to be uh, a speech. It can be something else too, but it always is something that's performed or something that's done in, the, in that moment with little or no planning. Okay. Genesis is a noun. It's an origin, creation, or beginning. Um, if you know from the Bible, the first book of the Bible is called Genesis. It is actually the beginning um, and the creation of man and the creation of the earth. So fitting in with that, it's that beginning aspect. For my class, the Genesis was in August on your first day when you walked in um, and having to deal with that. But that idea of that beginning or that moment um, that it started. Libation is a liquid, especially when poured as an offering offering or drunk as part of a ceremony. So um, libations is like when you go do the toast at a wedding, when you toast to someone's birthday, but it's that liquid and it's done as an offering um, or as part of a ceremony. Okay. Um, and it can be done like here, it talks about the idea of the celebrants poured out their cups as a libation to the harvest gods. So, or harvest God, so that definitely fits into that idea of ceremony. Malai is a noun, a vague feeling of uneasiness or unwillingness. Uh, mal is the root here, mal meaning usually sad or lower um, or uneasy in that. Um, so that feeling here, um, malaise is definitely that idea of uneasiness and unwellness, but it's that, it's that vague feeling. So you can't really describe it, but it definitely is there. Okay. Platitude is a thought. It's a noun, a thought or remark that is dull or trite. Dull um, is in this idea that it's boring. Trite means overdone. So the idea um, of phrases like that's what she said, those are remarks that are overdone, that um, LOL or YOLO. Those are phrases that we use way too much. So that fits into this idea um, of a platitude. So if someone says these types of things or remarks, they need to actually refresh their vocabulary, refresh their phrases, and get rid of their platitudes. Platitudes are also um, cliches, is a, another synonym for a platitude. Okay, reconcile is a verb. It has three definitions. Um, number one, to reestablish an amicable relationship. Um, so to reestablish as in a friendly relationship. So if you were two are fighting and you go and you make up, that's an amicable relationship. You're reconciling. Number two is to bring to quiet submission. So that idea of being rowdy and obnoxious and then quieting down, you're reconciling, you're, you're coming into submission, um, and you're, you're bringing it down a notch. Um, number three, to bring into harmony or agreement. Um, this fits back with number one with that idea of something loud and obnoxious, um, but bringing it into harmony. So it's like that idea that you were arguing and complaining about something, but we brought it into harmony. We, we came up with a agreement um, and we move on with that. Okay. The, la the next one, sunder, is a verb. Um, to break or force apart or to sever. So think of it as a plank or a piece of wood. Um, when you're breaking it in half or you're severing it, that's you're sundering it. When you're knocking down a rock, when you're knocking down a building, um, you are sundering it, you're severing it, you're forcing it to break, to fall apart. Lightning does a good job with this. Earthquakes do this all of the time. So when the ground is, is straight like this, but yet you notice um, on streets where, or when we've had earthquakes, how the land shifts and how it breaks apart and you now have lines and cracks within the concrete that it's been sundered or severed due to an earthquake. Okay, and the last word travail is a noun. It's activity that is arduous and burdensome or toil. 
um, or it's something that's suffering or anguish. So it's it's something like uh, many of you think of preparing and taking this AP test as being this travail. It's this burdensome activity that you really don't want to have to deal with. Um, but you know you have to deal with it, but it's really something that's causing you suffering and you're feeling anguish over it. Okay, your homework tonight is uh, Wordly Wise 13 A and B, and obviously the video and the couple questions that you had to go with it. Um, tomorrow night you will be doing C and D, so if you want to go ahead and do C and D for gold, you can. And then on Thursday we will be having a Wordly Wise 13 quiz, um, so being prepared for that is important. Um, and then we're actually going to keep going with the Wordly Wise so that your vocabulary is improving and refreshing um, before the AP test. So as soon as we're done with 13, I'm going to start 14, and I'm probably going to get through like four or five lessons, and there's probably going to be tests or quizzes after each one. So keeping that in mind is important, and remembering that you're working for XP to be able to drop one of these tests or quizzes, so this gives you that opportunity, okay? Um, and remembering you're keeping up with the AP review stuff at the same time, but tonight's homework is this video, Wordly Wise A and B, and then you got a quiz on Thursday. Have a good night and talk to you later.